Please rise and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on into an absolutely packed Blockstage Field as we have the 113th annual Thanksgiving game between the Swamp Scott Big Blue and the Marblehead Magicians. Jo I am Dawson DeBerry, and I'm joined by Josh Harriman. Josh, I am fired up. Are you fired up? I am, I am very fired up. But first of all, Dawson, happy Thanksgiving, man. Happy Thanksgiving And happy to Thanksgiving to all in here watching it at home. Definitely didn't have to drive out here in the cold. Yeah, everyone that is joining us, thank you for spending your Thanksgiving morning with us on Swamp's Got Big Blue Athletics, as Marblehead has deferred in recent years, winning the last 12 since the Big Blue took the 100th annual matchup back in 2010. And we are just about ready to go as Marblehead is going to kick it off to the Big Blue. Dawson, I just can't believe 113 years ago today, the first annual first annual football games to start on Thanksgiving. The first one started in 1910. And here we go. We are underway from Blockstage Field as the kick goes all the way into the end zone for a touchback, and the Big Blue will start at the 25-yard line. That was Greg Matorny on the kick. And the Big Blue will have the first possession led by sophomore quarterback Jack Spear. I met up with Spear earlier this week, and he said he is so ready for this game. He cannot wait for the atmosphere, and it is a good one. It is absolutely packed here at Blockstage Field, almost a capacity. Spears the go-to man to start off a football game, definitely on offense, because from the last few games that we saw from him when we were at home, he, all of his passes were completed. Yeah, Only he, one or two have been incomplete, but other than that, he has been spot on for the whole season. Now the first snap from scrimmage for Spear in the big blue. It's going to be a pitch to Nadwerny, who gets the first carry of the game, runs to the sideline, and will get a couple of yards before being brought down. Actually give him a gain of six, a solid first down run for the Big Blue senior playing in his final high school game as goes for both sides, seniors, as both teams have been eliminated from their respective playoff brackets. So the last game of the year for both of these teams, Josh, want to yeah. end it on a bang. Yeah, you want to end it on a bang and definitely have bragging rights for this one. Again, Marblehead has dominated the annual event. They have won 12 in a row, as I mentioned in the open. Here we go, second down and five. They gave him on the first play from the 25-yard line. And here's Nadwerny. He gets another carry and bulls up the middle for another solid gain. It's going to be a third down and short on the opening drive for the Big Blue. Trying to get that running game going early. I'll be interested to see who gets the bulk of the work for the Big Blue in the backfield as they've been shuffling through a rotation of sorts the last four or so weeks. Nad Werney getting the first series here in a third down and two. The Big Blue trying to avoid going three and out on their first drive. 
And it's going to be another handoff to Nad Wernie, and he fights his way forward for a big blue first down. So the running game gets going early. Nad Wernie with 12 early yards on his first three carries. That's a great sign to see, Josh. A very great sign to see, especially with a full house. It, the stands are so full, everybody has to wrap around the field just to get a view. Swamp Scott trying to get this large crowd involved early. Would be very helpful if they could strike first. Just getting underway at Bloxage Field. Spear sets up in his normal shotgun. He's got trips to his, he's got doubles, excuse me, on his right. One wide receiver left with Keeney lined up at the tight end. And Nad Wernie's going to get his first, hand, first handle of the opening drive. He loses the football, but he was down for a short gain at the 35-yard line. And he will come out for Will Bush, who will be the second running back to get some action today. Nad Wernie with 15 yards on four carries to start the game. Bush lines up to the left of Spear as he's ready to take the second down snap. And here he is looking to make his first passing attempt. He's going deep down the sideline for Marino and incomplete. Nice coverage there by Cam Quigley as he gets the pass deflection and it's incomplete setting up a third down and long for the Big Blue. Great play there by the cornerback. A very great play. So Spear starts his day 0 for 1. And we'll have a third down and medium to deal with as you see him with offensive coordinator Robert Serino. Already a big third down in this game. Marblehead trying to get Swamp Scott off the field on their opening drive. Swamp Scott trying to keep it alive. And it's going to be a pitch to Nad Wernie. He gets the edge. He runs forward and he dies close to a first down. It looks like he's going to be just a yard short. And we'll see decision time for Coach Bush already. It's going to be a fourth down in inches. Oh, they're going to give him the first down. So Nad Wernie's second effort. Gets him just enough for the first down, and the Big Blue move the chains on third down and eight. Big play early, Josh. Moving it slowly but surely. Swampscott wants to control the tempo of this game. Swampscott's over a record six and five. Marblehead four and five as they have their first year in Division Three. Swampscott down in Division Six, both eliminated from their respective brackets. As Spears gonna attempt his second pass of the game, goes up the middle, intercepted. They read that one all the way and run, running it back inside the 40 is Brooks Keefe, the senior safety, gets the interception and Marblehead takes over. Spear didn't see him lurking over the middle and the Mar Magicians will take over. Unfortunate for the Big Blue there. Very unfortunate, but, but they don't know what, Marblehead does not know what Swamp Scott defense has in store for them. 8.28 to go in the first quarter. Eight twenty-eight to go. As Marblehead has their first snap from scrimmage. It's going to be a reverse. They're going to throw out of it. He's looking for room. Can't find anyone. And a bring down to the backfield. That is Jack Hazel making the big play against Andy Palmer, who was looking for a receiver downfield. Well covered by the Big Blue, and Jack Hazel gets the sack. Weird to say a sack on a wide receiver, but that is what that was. As he was looking for a throw. A big play to start it off for the Big Blue defense. That play definitely left a statement. Finn Gallup is at quarterback for the Magicians. Brooks Keefe, who just made the interception, will get the first handoff and runs it up the middle for a good gain. He gets back to the line of original line of scrimmage and more, which will set up a third down. Third down in about eight or nine coming up. It's going to be eight. 
as they pick up seven. At the big blue 35, trying to capitalize on the Brooks Keefe interception of Jack Spear. Swampscott shows pressure, now they back off. It's gonna be a quarterback draw, design run, running it up the middle with room and past the 25 to the 20 inside and still pushing the pile to the 15. The ball is pride free, but they blow it dead just before. They blew the play dead before the fumble. So it's gonna be a first down inside the 20 yard line for Marblehead on the big gain by the quarterback Finn Gallup. And Marblehead has the early momentum. Gallup's gonna set up alone in the backfield. He takes the snap and now looks to throw quickly out to the right, caught by Palmer, inside the 10, and tackled first down and goal gonna be for the Magicians at the five yard line. So Marblehead moving the ball with ease on the Swamp Scott defense after the first place sack from Jack Hazel. First down and goal at the five. Gallup's gonna take the snap and hand it off to the inside to Brooks Keefe who gets tripped up after a gain of a couple. It's gonna be second down and goal from the two or the three yard line. We'll see where the, they put the spot. Marblehead trying to get on the board first as we are just about halfway through this first quarter. Gallup now in the shotgun. Takes the snap and he's gonna hand it off to Keefe again who runs right up the middle and walks in for a Marblehead touchdown and they make a statement early as they take the early six to nothing lead. Not the start the big blue we're looking for. Not a great start, but hey, it's only it's only it's gonna it's only a touchdown. They can get that back real easily. It's going to be Greg Matorny on the extra point. And the kick is up and through and to make it 7 to nothing, Marblehead early. So the Big Blue were moving it a little bit on their opening drive, but the interception by Keefe, and then he ran it in for the two-yard score, has them with the early momentum. 7 to nothing, Marblehead. And Matorny will kick it right back to the Big Blue after the opening drive touchdown for the Magicians. Big Blue will look to right the ship early on this next drive. And this kick high in the air and handled by Hazel at around the five yard line and he's gonna look to run it back. He has a seam, he's got the edge, he's at the 40. This is a comeback, this is a beat. comeback. And he is out of here, he's he is gone. gone. It's a kickoff return, 95 yards to the house, Jack Hazel. And Swampscott get it right back. 
Dawson, I see something on the ground, and I don't think anybody's going to like it. Oh, is there a flag on the play? No, there's no flag. It is a touchdown. Swamp Scott. My mistake. I oh, Wait. I believe it's going to be... Wait, what do we got here? Trying to see the referee's expl explanation. Okay, I think what they called... Okay, so the touchdown is good. I believe they called a flag on the Big Blue bench for running down to the end zone with Hazel. So, the touchdown is good. I'm, I'm sure the flag will be on, ex, uh, assessed on yeah. the kickoff. So, a bolt of energy from the captain, Jack Hazel, playing his final high school football game. He has a 95-yard kickoff return, and Joe Marino will be on to look to tie this game up with the extra point. Like I said a few moments ago, Dawson, it's only one point. They can get it back real easily. And Marino's kick is up and good to tie this ball game. So in a flash, the Big Blue tie it up 7-7. Seven to seven. That is definitely you want to see early early game, Dawson. Lose, uh, be down by a touchdown, then instantly get it right back. Absolutely. That was much needed after the early wave of a mo momentum Marblehead had. And I want to give a shout out to everyone here today. A lot of Big Blue alumni in the stands uh, showing their support all back home from college, some out of college. I think I think all Big Blue alumni is around the field, Dawson. Like, it, yeah. <laughs> you can't narrow it down to one place when it's packed like this. And pla packed this place is, as I can't talk today, apparently. <laughs> That's like the third time <laughs> I've stuttered my words like that. But Marino is ready to kick it off to the to, back to the Magicians. No penalty, I believe. It may have just been a warning on the big blue bench. So we are tied up at 7, 5.31 to go in the first quarter. And the kick is fielded around the 10-yard line. This is Andy Palmer on the return, trying to get it right back, trying to bounce it to the edge, and Ooh, a big hit coming back hit. into the play. Sam Obala makes the play at around the 37-yard line. Ooh, I was scared there for a second. He would have got yeah. the edge, but Obala getting back into the play makes the big tackle, and the Magicians will go back to work at the 37-yard line. I thought... Dawson, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was going to be a repeat of what yeah. of what Big Blue just did. <laughs> so we'll see how the Swamp Scott defense bounces back after allowing a pretty dominant opening, opening drive touchdown on the short field by Marblehead. It's going to be an inside handoff to Brooks Keefe, who has established the run game early, just keeps churning those feet and picks up a solid six or so yards on the first down snap. Luke Sirianni will get a breather for Vaughn Hazel. Gallup now, this is an outside toss to Keefe, and Vaughn Hazel was there first, and finishing the tackle, Sam Nadwerney on the edge for a loss of two, a nice play. Hazel was there first, Nadwerney cleaned up the mess, and it's third down and seven, or six for Marblehead coming up. So a big stop if the Big Blue can get it with the momentum back on their side. Marblehead running a little bit of tempo, Gallup getting his troops to the line quickly he's gonna look to throw he's looking right throwing right and, and intercepted it's hazel straight he's away going. straight away he's got he's... one hand and he's brought down at the 10 yard line jack hazel doing it all early and the big blue have a first down and goal dawson it just went straight to him like 
I am impressed. This is definitely a comeback for Big Blue right now. What a response from the Big Blue after the early wave from Marblehead. And on the third down play, Jack Hazel almost took it all the way back, but it sets up a first down and goal for the Big Blue offense. Looking to go up early with four minutes to go in the first quarter. This is definitely you want to see something, especially on a especially on an opening drive. Spear now gonna hand it to Nadwern. He bounces to his left and dives his way forward for maybe a yard as Marblehead had good coverage on that play. Nadwern he could not get his way inside. So second down and goal from the nine for the big blue. Here we go, second down and nine for the Big Blue. Second down and goal from the nine, I should say. It's been all Nad Werney in the Swamp Scott backfield so far. He's got six carries. And Spears gonna look to throw, throwing to the inside. That pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. So it's third down and goal coming up. Hazel, who just got a breather, he's run about 100 yards in two, about 150 yards and two plays combined in this first half. He gets back on the field. He's been Spears' number one target this year. Gabe Tripp will come off in for Hazel. So it sets up a third down and goal from the nine. Spears starts his day 0 for 3 with an interception. We'll see if he can get on track. The Big Blue have done their job to stay in the game despite that. And here is Spear going to set up a screen to Nadwerny. He has the edge, diving for the pylon, and he's going to be just a couple yards short. So an interesting decision as the Big Blue are at extra point distance. Actually, they marked them a lot shorter than I thought they would. They're going to mark them at the five. So it's a fourth down and goal from the five. We'll see what Coach Bush elects to do. And it seems that they're going to leave the offense on the field for the biggest play of the game so far as we wind down this first quarter. 3.09 left in it. Dawson, all you got to do in this situation is just find the gaps. Just somehow get into that end zone any way possible. Fourth down and goal. Aggressive call from Coach Bush. Trying to take the lead early. And we have a timeout taken by Swampscott before the fourth down play. A great early advantage for Swampscott. First yeah. a kickoff return and then an interception straight thrown to the player. It was a great response after the early touchdown from Marblehead. For a sure. very great response. Dawson, while we're in here in this timeout, what's your favorite part of Thanksgiving? Uh, definitely the food, for sure. I, nothing better than uh, just eating a bunch of food, watching football, and being with your family, for sure, which is what I'll be doing after this. I can't agree more. Yeah. Josh, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Uh, I'm not sure. It's either pumpkin pie or turkey. Yeah. I'm a stuffing guy. I love some stuffing. So, out of the timeout, it's going to be a fourth and goal for the Big Blue from the five-yard line. They elect to keep the offense on the field, use one of their three timeouts to make sure they get the perfect call on this one. Fourth down and five from the five. And here we go, the biggest play of the early stage of this one. 3.09 to go in the first quarter. They send Keeney in motion. Spears going to take the snap. He's going to roll to his right, looking for a receiver. Throws back left. Juggled and caught. Joe Marino with the miraculous touchdown grab off of the arm. Great play. Of a Marblehead defender. And it's a touchdown. Swamp Scott. That is something you definitely want to see. You get First, you get a kickoff return, an interception. 
two or three plays later, you're in the end zone once again. Ooh, some luck for the big blue. As Very Marino luck right there. Makes the catch, and now he'll look to add the extra points. 13 to seven, Swamp Scott early in this first half. 3.03 to go in the first quarter. It's a five yard catch from Spear to Marino. Spear threw it across his body as he had no one open on the right side. It went off the arms of a Marblehead defender and right into the welcomed hands of Joe Marino for the six. And now his extra point is up and it is good. And it is 14 to seven, Big Blue. That play definitely got the crowd routed up. Oh yeah, crowd is rowdy here at Blocks Hit Shield. And as Swamp Scott goes up for the kick. Joe Marino just scored the touchdown and now he kicks it away. It's a low squibber. Fielded eventually, running into his own man and being brought down inside the 35 is and Drew gets Goldman. pushed back. Two fifty-five left in the first quarter. Marblehead gets a second chance uh, on offense as uh, interception took their last drive. Jack Hazel having a heck of a half in the first quarter. Heck of a quarter, I should say. <laughs> a ninety-five yard kickoff return and an interception that set up the Joseph Marino touchdown. As this is going to be a quick screen pass to Andy Palmer on the outside, and he gets a solid gain of eight or nine on the first down play, his second catch of the day. Obala gets credited with a tackle for pushing him out of bounds. So it's a second down and three, they give him seven. Keith stays in the backfield for Marblehead. Gallup now takes a snap and runs up the middle, breaks the initial tackle, moves it to the inside, and is across the 50 to the 45. I'm sorry, that's Colt Wales in the game. And he picks up the first down with his legs. Now back in Swamp's got territory. The Magicians looking to move the ball to tie this one up as we go under 2.30 to go in the first quarter. Wales, the inside handoff. No, it's a read option. He's going to take it himself. Flag flies on the play as he picks up a modest gain. We'll see what the call is. And it's going to be a holding on the offense. That is something you definitely don't want to see. If you're a Magicians fan, if you're a Swamp Scott fan, you want to see more. You'll be glad if you can. <laughs> And as that penalty throws back the Magicians. It's now, instead of a second down and five, it's a first down and 20. Wales in at quarterback. He's gonna look to throw, trying to set up a screen for Palmer again. He makes a catch, makes the first guy miss, but doesn't get much, two if anything. Good coverage on the outside. Sorry, that was uh, Ryan Kamas, not Palmer on the catch. 
but he just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Here we go now, second down and 19 after the gain of one by Kamas. Wales now drops back and looks to throw. Now he's going to take it up the middle on the quarterback draw. He's got some running room, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage and a couple more tackle on the play made by Sam Obala. It's going to be a third down and nine for the Magicians as Henry Beitler is going to get action on defense, replacing Max Field on the edge. They gave him 11 on the play, third down and eight from the 43. Wales sets up in shotgun with Keefe. Wales takes the snap, looking to throw, throws to his right, makes the catch and diving forward for a first down. That is Crew Monaco, who Made a nice move after the catch to move the chain so they get out of the first and 20 hole and pick up the first down. And it looks like that's going to be the final snap of the first quarter unless they hurry up to the line. And it, they are not going to get the snap off. So after the first 12 minutes of the game, it's the Swamp's got Big Blue 14 and the Marblehead Magician 7. In the second quarter, Marblehead has it in plus territory inside the Big Blue 35 at the 34. They have moved the ball well outside of the interception in the first quarter. Colt Wales coming in for this drive has done a really nice job so far. It's going to be a fake handoff and read by Beitler very nicely and he gets the TFL on the read option and he is fired up. Getting some action on defense today. And he makes the play. Second down and 11. Wales takes the snap and he's going to hand it to Keefe on the right side. Has a big hole and runs forward. He's tripped up by Hazel. Shy of a first down, a couple yards shy. And it's going to bring down a bring up a third down. A third down and four coming up. One thing to note, Marblehead has a very good kicker. So they can kick field goals from... A pretty decent range as Keefe's going to get another handoff up the middle. And it is Goes stopped nowhere. by Henry Beitler. He's made two big plays on this set of downs, and it's fourth down. That's a loss of one. It's fourth down and five at the 30. The offense is staying out there. On this fourth down snap. 
fourth and six officially. Marblehead trying to keep the drive alive. Can the big blue get the big stop? Wales is alone in the backfield. He has five wide receivers wide. Got to be alert of the quarterback draw. It's going to be a throw out to the left. He's got a man wide open, and it's Palmer. Has the first down and more inside the 20-yard line. That's a huge play for Marblehead. Very huge play. Gabe Tripp credited with the tackle, but not in time to negate the first down from Andy Palmer, who has three or four early catches. So a first down and 10. Wales sets up in the same five wide formation. They've run a quarterback draw out of this a couple times. Now they send Keefe in motion. He's going to get a touch pass running around the edge. Oh! and gets the tackle for a loss. That was a heck of a that tackle. That was a one heck of a tackle. Rooks Keefe is a big running back to bring down, and he went low and made a very nice tackle there. Second and 12. Swamp Scott's done a nice job against the Marblehead run game after that first drive. They just got to come up with the timely third and fourth down stops as Wales will set up with Keith in the backfield once again. It's going to be a read option as Wales runs straight up the middle and gets about three or four on the play. It will bring up a third and long. It looks like it's going to be a third down and ten. Liam Keeney gets credited with the tackle on the nice play as Wales had some speed up the middle. Josh, what have you liked from the big blue defense so far? I'm just still in shock from what they have done progressively in the first quarter. So, especially that interception. But right now, they're doing a magnificent job, other than the first time when Marblehead first scored. They're definitely recomposing themselves to stop it. Third down and 10. Wales had a man open, but he threw it behind. An incomplete pressure by Liam Keeney forced that throw. And incomplete, and it brings up a fourth down and 10. And it looks like they're going to leave the offense out on the field. Dawson is not football until you hear the fans section just bantering the other team. Love it. It's a great sound to hear. Fourth down and 10 for Wales in the Marblehead offense. Trying to tie this ball game up. 8.03 remaining in the second quarter. It's a fourth down and 10. From the 19-yard line, they have to get to the 9-yard line. Everybody is getting loud. It is loud in here. Fourth down and 10, Wales looking to throw. Looking, has a man open, and it was. They're going to say it was incomplete. And the Big Blue will take over on downs. You a can big tell, stop. You can tell Dawson it was incomplete because his knees were... The only way you can tell it's if it's that if it's the game's if the ball's uh, I cannot speak I'm just in shock of what just happened. Just, I believe <laughs> I'm turning into you. The ground before um, that was Ryan Kamas had possession, so it goes incomplete. First down and ten for the Big Blue trying to extend their lead. 7:56 to go in the first half. And loud in here. It did get loud. I heard it through the headset talking to you. Yeah. And we have the marching band going on, led by Mr. Rovi. Mr. Rovi was fired up this morning. Mr. Rovi is, Mr. Rovi's always fired up. When is one time you haven't seen him fired up? That is true. Especially at a football game. Spear looking to throw now. Spear pumps, and he is sacked. That is Jake Skoglin, the senior captain, makes a big play for the Marblehead defense. And it, honestly, a good job by Spear to not fumble that ball. He got hit hard. He did. And now it's going to be a second down at 20. It'll be second and 18 for Swamp Scott. Dawson, we've seen Swamp Scott in situations like this way far worse. Oh, for sure. Knowing, knowing the coaching of Swamp Scott offense and the capability of the offense itself, I know they can get the. I know they can get back into the first down range. They hand to Nadwerney, trying to make the second down more manageable as he picks up 
a decent game, but it's still going to be a third down and 14 for the Big Blue. So he picks up four on his seventh carry of the day. Swampscott's defense worked very hard to get off the field. You'd like to see them pick up this first down to give them a couple more minutes rest. But it is a tall task. Third down and 14 for Spear. Spear takes the snap. Pressure coming off the edge. They try to set up the screen. Now he makes the catch. Not much room there. And he is brought down. And the Big Blue are going to be forced to punt it away. Pick up of three. It's fourth down and 11. And Max Field will come on for his first punt of the day. And Andy Palmer will be back to return. False start on Swampscott. So it brings them back five more yards. So now Max Field left have to punt from his end zone. But it does take a big blue bounce, luckily, and gets to the 37-yard line. So Marblehead will have really good field position to start their third drive of the game. But the one thing they got to watch out for, Dawson, is the defense. They have done a pretty decent job so far, keeping Marblehead almost in check as Gallup checks back in at quarterback for Colt Wales. for Keefe on the delayed handoff. He has a hole this time. Ooh, and a, heavy another hit. big hit by Nad Werney. He's flipped over Keefe a couple of times early in this first half. Yes, he has. But nonetheless, it's a good first down gain for Marblehead as it's a second down and three. Brooks Keefe has got a lot of the work in the backfield. He's done a pretty good job. The Big Blue have held them relatively in check, and he's going to get another handoff. And this time, he rumbles up the middle for a first down and more, up to around the 25-yard line, where it will be first and 10 for Marblehead. Looks deep on the carry. That's good enough for a Marblehead first down. It'll be first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Once again, runs up the middle, bounces off the first hit, and now he's gonna go almost all the way in a big tackle made by Henry Beitler at around the 10 yard line. So it'll be first and goal for Marblehead, a touchdown saving tackle by Beitler, but it's a good gain for a first down and goal. It'll be first and goal for Marblehead at the 10 yard line. Marblehead trying to knock this one up with four minutes to go. Gallup. Gallup alone in the backfield. Keefe comes in motion and he's gonna get the hand up. No, it's a read option play and a nice tackle. Luke Sirianni there first for the stop. He's fired up. Second down and goal now from the 10 yard line. A nice play there by a the A very nice seven. play. Brought down by number 
Love takes the snap. He's gonna run it to the right by himself. And another nice play by the front seven. It's a very modest gain. Beitler in there, Riddell in there, Sirianni in there. And a flag in the a air. flag is on the play. We'll see what the referee motion is gonna be. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the big blue. That is a killer. It's gonna be a first down automatically and it brings the ball half the distance to the goal. So that's a really, really big penalty. So instead of third and goal from the nine, it's first and goal from the three. Marblehead looking to capitalize. And Dawson as the crowd gets riled up. First down and goal for Marblehead. Keith has the Marblehead score and He's gonna get the handoff again. He runs right and he's in for his second of the day. It's a touchdown for Marblehead and it's 14 to 13 before the extra point. Two fifty-seven remaining in the second quarter. Marblehead looking to dot it up with the Matorny extra point. So the Big Blue will have a chance before the half to pick up points, but it is 14 to 14 after Brooks Keefe's second touchdown of the first half. will kick it off to the Big Blue with 2.57 to go in the first half. The game knotted up at 14. Marvelet has silenced the crowd momentarily with that last touchdown score. seven-yard line and he's looking for room up the left side and he's brought down inside the 25 at the 22-23 ish yard line 16-yard return for the senior and the Big Blue will take over Swampscott in the three minute drill, trying to take the lead before the half. It's Will Bush joining Spear in the backfield to start this possession. And he's gonna get his first handle of the ball game, running up the middle, and he is stacked up 
after a short gain on the play. It's going to be second down and nine after he picked up about a yard and a half. Maybe give him second down and eight. Now the second down play, Spear takes the snap, looking for the quick throw to Hazel, makes the catch, trying to shake free of the tackle. And he was close to a first down before being pushed back. And it looks like off the initial spot that they're gonna give him enough for the first down. And they are, so Jack Hazel on the second effort, picks up a big blue first down. And that's good enough for a big blue first down. 2.05 to go in the half, our clock's a little off, sorry about that. Now we are under two minutes. First and 10. Will Bush gets the handoff, trying to fight up the middle and does not get anything as the Marblehead front seven did a good job holding their line. It's gonna be a timeout Swamp Scott with 1.44 to go in the first half. And just stick around for halftime as we have as we have cheerleading and band performing at halftime. So when we get back from the timeout, it's going to be a second down and ten for the Big Blue. We go 144 to go in the half. 14 to 14 is our score. Second down and 10 for the Big Blue. Spear takes the snap, throws in a dangerous, dangerous pass. Goes incomplete, intended for Keeney. So it's a third down. It'll bring up third down to Swan Scott. So a big play, third down and 10, with 1.41 to go in the first half. Swamp's got to try not to give Marblehead too much time to be able to take the lead before half, so this turns out to be a big play with Nad Werney back in the backfield for the Big Blue. Spears just gonna hand this one off to Nad Werney, and he picks up a couple before being brought down, and Marblehead's gonna take a timeout to preserve as much clock as possible, so Big Blue kind of giving up on that drive, and we'll have to punt it away with 1.33 to go in the first half. Marblehead did have to use their first timeout to stop the clock. I mean, when, when you're on a time crunch like this, especially when it's close to halftime and Marblehead gets the ball back in the second half, you gotta you gotta preserve your timeouts because once you have them, once you use them, you don't have them anymore until the next half. So Marblehead will have two timeouts and the ball with 1:33 to go in the first half. Maxfield looking to redeem himself after the kind of shanked punt the last time he was out there. A big punt is needed to keep Marblehead out of field position to maybe score before the half. It's been a struggle for the Big Blue offense, but the defense have kept them in it. Jack Hazel as well with the kickoff return. Helped out a ton. Max 
Max this time gets off the punt cleanly. It's not a great one. It bounces at the 40 and stays out of inbounds and is picked up at the 41 yard line. So Marblewood has good field position and plenty of time to take the lead before half with 1.23 to go. One twenty three to go in the first half. Colt Wales back in the game on this last drive of the half for Marble. He's going to fake the handoff to keep and take it himself up the middle, picking up five on the first down play. The clock will continue to run. They hustle back up to the line. Wales telling his, calling the play to the offensive lineman. He's going to take the snap, looking to throw quickly to Palmer, and it's blocked by Max Field as he gets the pass deflection incomplete, third down and five, with 56 seconds to go in the half. A great block. That was a great play. He had Palmer open. So, 56 seconds to go. Third down and five. Now he's going to run on the QB drop. He's got plenty of room. He's got plenty of room. And no flag on the play. He gets out of bounds and the first down in Big Blue territory at the 45. Defensive coach on the sideline for the Big Blue wanted a call. But did not get one. 50 seconds to go in the first half. Marblewood has it in plus territory. And they stop the clock by getting out of bounds there as well. Wales takes the snap, looking to throw, and we have a flag that blows the play dead. It's gonna be a false start. So that'll bring Marblehead five yards back. 48 seconds to go in the half. Uh, definitely a breather for the Swamp Scott defense. It'll be first and 10 for Marblehead at the 50 yard line. So that brings them back to midfield with 48 seconds to go. takes the snap and looks to throw. Looking to his right, sets up a screen to keep. He's got a lot We're at the 30 yard line and Marblehead will use their second timeout of the half. Or no, they won't, the clock stops on the first down, excuse me. They're gonna keep running with their offense. 38 seconds to go, now the clock begins to run. 33, Wales takes the snap, there it's gonna be a false start as they did not have the line synced up. So the clock will stop with 31 to go and will start on the official signal, but timeout Marblehead. Their second and a half, they have one remaining. Swamp Scott's defense trying to survive into the locker room with this game tied at 14. It's make or break right now, Dawson, especially with 31 seconds. It's either you gotta get closer to the end zone or get points on the board. Thirty-one seconds to go. It's a first down and fifteen for Marblehead. Trying to get points on the board before the half. Five wide. Wills takes the snap, looking right. Now looking back, rolling out to his left. Going to try to run with it and run down. Max Field makes the big play with twenty-three seconds to go in the half. 
a great tackle by the Swamp Scott defense. Out of bounds, so it stops the clock and it's second and a mile. They have to get to the big blue 21 yard line to pick up a first down. With 23 seconds to go in the half, they have one timeout remaining. Remember, Marblehead gets the ball to start the second half. Trying to go for the old patented double score. Trying to get the first half before the end of the first half. Wales looks to throw, sets up the screen to keep oh, right well. It goes down. nowhere. Liam with the big play. The clock continuing to run out. Will Marble use their final timeout? And it doesn't look like they will. Looks like they just oh, got left. They will the now take the timeout with five seconds left. Maybe attempt a long field goal or a Hail Mary. We'll see which one they decide. From here, it would be a 58 yard field goal, so I doubt that will be the call. Christina, get off the car now. Are you kidding? Away. No. Scott will come out in some sort of prevent defense on the final play of the half. Marblehead is out of timeouts. At the 40-yard line with five seconds remaining. In the so half. this will be the final snap of the first half, most likely. They maybe have time to throw it quickly out and get out of bounds to get just a little bit closer. If they make the tackle, it doesn't matter. And they do. So, the Swampscott defense holds with 1.57 to go in the first half. And we will take a 14-14 tie into the locker room. Make sure you stay tuned for the Big Blue cheerleaders and the marching band performing at half. My name is Austin Berry. I'm joined by Josh Harriman. We'll be right back for second half action.
Well, you might well walk down there. You might run into her. Okay? Oh, they're coming. Oxage field as we are knotted up 14 to 14. 
the Big Blue or will kick off to Marblehead to start the second half as we have a tightly contested game here on Thanksgiving in the 113th annual matchup between the two rival towns. Swampscott trying to break a 12-year losing streak. And a big chance here as they go into the half. The final 24 minutes, 14 to 14. Joe Marino will kick it off for the Big Blue to get the half underway. Ball falls off the tee. Honestly, Swampscott just got to control the defense and locate where the ball is. And now this is Gallup who starts the first, first play of the second half with a solid run up to the 30 yard line. It's a gain of eight, Brian Giarla makes the tackle. Second down and two coming up for Marblehead. Finn Gallup and Colwell to switch off as we have a drive at quarterback. Gallup's turn to start in the second half. He got the start as well. Palmer makes the catch on the screen and has a ton of room up the left side and is brought down past the 40 for a Marblehead first down. So a good start for the Magicians offense. That is Palmer's fifth catch of the day. First and 10 at the 43 yard line. It's a football on the read option, and, and Gallup just had to go down after he repossessed it. A scary play. A very scary play, Dawson. Second down and nine for the magicians as well as Gallup gonna take himself a pack. Field is there. He's gone nowhere. For the tackle for a loss, it was a design run for Finn Gallup. And Max Field made the play immediately. So it brings up a third down and long. It's a third and 12 after the loss. Max saw the opening in the in Marblehead's offensive position, took it, and it got him good luck. He got the sack. So now on the third down and 12, Wales subs in for Gallup. Swamp's got trying to get off the field. It's Wales on the snap, looks for the screen, catches made, now reversing field and having room, and picking up close to the first down, and he's gonna get it. That's a back-breaking play for the Big Blue defense. That is Chris DeWitt with his first catch of the day. Picks up the first down on third and 12. Right there by number eight, William Keeney. That'll be a first down for Marvel Hill. First and 10 at the 46 yard line. Chris DeWitt stands at 6'3", 205. Tough to bring down in the open field, and he picks up 13 to pick up the first down. Will 
still stays in after the first down. It's going to be a fake handoff, but he's going to take it himself. And a big hit! Jack Measles there! And he is fired up! Bull rushed through the line, and it's a gain of one as Wales took a big hit on the read option. That was a very big hit by Hazel. It's like one second you're looking for an opening, second you, you see Hazel just taking you down, making you get no yards. Only one yard brought up on the play. Second down and nine. Wales now. Takes the snap, this time he fakes the hand up, looking to throw deep, down the field, nice play! Game tripping coverage gets the breakup, and it's incomplete. That pass went nowhere, especially with the tip from Tripp. Kamaz was down there for the Magicians, and Game Tripp made the big play. And it's third down and nine for the Big Blue defense, trying to get their way off the field. Will Bush is gonna get a breather. Let's go. Only two more plays until Swamp Scott offense can get on the field. And give stop the magicians from getting to their 41 yard line, 36 yard line. Their 36 yard line from the 45. Third down and nine. Wales takes the snap, drops back to throw. He pumps, he looks for the ball. It's a jump ball and caught. Chris DeWitt went up. Wait, they're saying it is a completed pass. And Chris DeWitt goes up and mosses game trip, and it sets up Marblehead in the red zone. First down and 10 at the 20. Chris DeWitt has four, four inches of height and 60 pounds on game trip, making him, and he went up there and showed it with that catch. Wales takes a snap, throws the screen to Kamas, trying to wrap him up his trip. He gets out of the initial tackle, but a nice play made on the second layer by Liam Keeney was there, as well as I believe Joe Marino was over there. So, no gain on the play, second down and 10. No gain on the play, second down from the 20. Second down and 10 from the 20. Swamp Scott's defense trying to hold. Wales stays in the shotgun. Keith, who slipped at the line and dives forward for a couple of yards for it to set up the third down play. It's going to be about a third down and eight, seven or eight, depending on the official spot. The Big Blue have struggled on, the Big Blue defense have struggled on third down. Eight of one on the play, third and eight. Third and eight officially. Marblehead, Marblehead sets up in the five wide. Wales alone in the backfield. He takes the snap, looking to throw, looking left, throwing left. Low throw, but caught by Keefe at the 12-yard line, and he's just short of the first down mark. It's fourth and one. Or two, fourth and two. They go to the line quickly. Wales sets up in no huddle. Now they get a call from the sideline. They slow it down. Fourth down, the student section rises to their feet. Communication tough for Marblehead at Wales. In the shotgun on the fourth and two. He's gonna fake the handoff and he's got plenty of running room. He runs up the middle, touchdown, Marblehead. That was way too easy on the fourth and two. And Marblehead takes the lead, 20 to 14. A great play by the Magicians. Perfectly designed and perfectly read by Colt Wales. And he 
has the touchdown to make it 20 to 14 Marblehead. Swamp Scott will have to respond. drive but it is through for the extra point which makes the score Marblehead 21 Swamp Scott 14 so now a struggling big blue offense to be frank in that first half will have to respond and respond quickly after the dominant opening drive for the magicians Dawson, knowing the coaching of the big blue offense and defense, I already know they're going to make a they're they're going to make a great statement here. In a the last time they were trailing, Jack Hazel took the ensuing kickoff for a 95-yard return. Can we get some of that magic again here? Vittori will kick it away. His first kick being a touchback, the last two being returned. Go blue! Yeah, hold. Nat Wordy and Hazel back to return. And I'm here in the crowd once again chanting. They're going to have a holder on the kickoff as the ball won't stay on the tee with the wind. So, Crew Monaco will hold it for Tony. will take over. A heavy kick. Yeah. Especially after the ball doesn't want to stay on the tee after walking away from it two times. I'm not seeing it, man. So now the Big Blue offense gets their first turn as Marblehead took more than five minutes off the clock with their opening drive in the half. 6.18 to go in the third quarter. Swamp Scott's offense has to respond. Hazel comes in motion. It's gonna be a pitch to Nadwerny who breaks the tackle. This one's gonna come back regardless of the gain as there was a hold on the edge. And that's what it is. So it'll bring the Big Blue back 10 yards. And it'll be first and 20. Can't have that. Gonna be holding a huge one spot. Do you want to mention that this is Coach Bush? Bush's first Thanksgiving game as a head coach, trying to win his first one and break a 12-year streak of Marblehead winning the annual game. Trying to will his young team to victory here today on Thanksgiving. Spear takes the snap, looking to throw quickly to Marino. It's caught, and he is pushed out of bounds after a modest gain. And it will be second down and 14 after the gain of six. A great play by Swamp Scott. Even though that they're slowly making it back towards into non-dangerous placement, they're still going to get it either way. No, knowing the coaching of Coach Bush and the other head coaches, and definitely with Jack Spears' heck of an arm for throwing. They have struggled so far today. We'll see if they can turn it around here. Second down and 14. 
Spear looking to throw again. Pressure coming off of his blind side and he goes down. As things are starting to fall apart a little bit for the Big Blue. Nobody blocked Cam Quigley and he has a sack. And it's third down and an absolute mile for the Big Blue. Dawson, I'm telling you, when I when I said they're gonna make their statement and come back some way, that was it. Definitely got the crowd boosted with morale. As Spear gives Marino a big hug as he gets a, a well-deserved breather. After the long reception, first and goal from the five-yard line. Swamp Scott's offense trying to punch this ball in and tie this one up. 435 and counting in the third quarter. Spear checks it at the line. Low snap, he handles it, gets it to Nad Werney, and he is dragged down after no gain as the low snap kind of jumbled things up for the Big Blue there. So second down and goal from the five. The Big Blue have got to punch this in. They have to. They they can't just they can't just go from going from one side of the field at third and twenty-two to down to Marblehead's territory, second and five. They just gotta find the gaps that is open in the defense of Marblehead. up as a touchdown is made. Magnificent playing. What a change of events as the Big Blue were backed up at their own seven yard line. And now they are an extra point away from tying the ball game. A 93 yard drive for the Big Blue. What a ball game here at Blockstage Field in the 113th annual Thanksgiving game. Marino punches the extra point through, and we are tied. Tickets. No one has come to claim the big jackpot. Five, two, eight, 
Dawson with only 3.36 here in the third quarter. Tied game after that 93 yard rush to the end zone and then a five yard rush to lock in the touchdown. It was an 88 yard reception from Joseph Marino that set that Nat Verde touchdown up and Marino kicks it away. The ball rolls to the 18 yard line where it is taken and now having room up the right side and breaking free of the tackle all the way up to the 40 yard line where Katie makes the tackle. That is Quigley. Cam Quigley with the very nice return that sets up Marblehead in decent field position. Number 20, Cam Quigley on the return from Marblehead. Brought down by William Keeney. It'll be first and 10 from Marblehead. First and 10 from Marblehead. They were dominant on their own. Opening drive of the second half, a five minute, 42 second drive that went all the way down the field. It's Gallup again in at quarterback and a false start, so it's gonna bring them back five as Monaco and Galante on the outside. That Monaco and DeWitt both jumped on the outside, excuse me. Second down and 11. Max Field is credited with the tackle. Keeney was there on the initial hit. Second and 11 for Marblehead. Gallup takes the snap, looks to the left, caught by Palmer. Palmer now has room on the outside and is run out of bounds short of the first down which will bring up a third down and four. Third down and Third down and three, official. So we'll see if the big blue defense have struggled on third down. Can they get the big stop here? It's Gallup once again in the show. Great play. And they call the punt team, so the Big Blues defense holds. The first time we've actually seen Marblehead's punt team come out. They, it is a fourth and short, so you have to be diligent of the fake punt. It's a fourth and two if they were to fake it. Nadwerny is back to return. And the punt is away and it's a good one. Into the corner and out of bounds at the 10 yard line. We'll see where it's marked. And yep, right at the 10 yard line where the Big Blue offense will take back over with a chance to take the lead with 156 remaining in the third quarter. What a game. Yeah, it's been a magnificent game, Dawson. Even though that they, they, they've taken turns scoring on the board only by one touchdown, still it's a magnificent game so far. We've had three lead changes and three ties. It's 
Spear almost fumbled the snap, keeps it alive, and just throws it out of bounds as they're going to call an illegal man downfield on Swampscott as Riddell was all the way down the field as Spear fumbled the snap. I think he was expecting a screen. Got. It could be intentional grounding as well. I believe that's what we have an intentional. So we do have an intentional grounding, which will be accepted, which will be half the distance to the goal, which is second down, which, and a loss of down. So it's going to be second down and long for the big blue. Brings them all the way back to the three yard line. So danger zone for a possible safety. So, second down and long. It'll be against Swan Scott. It'll be second and ten. At the one yard line for Swan Scott. And we have a timeout. Swan Scott, so they have to burn their first timeout of the second half before the second and 20 snap. Swampscott has been putting off a magnificent game. Uh, a kickoff return, an interception, and not, and definitely not to forget that one magnificent play bringing us down from where we basically are now down to Marblehead territory for a touchdown. Trying to get out of the danger zone, not trying not to take a safety. Spear handles the snap cleanly. He's going to look to throw, looking downfield, and that's well out of the reach of Liam Keeney, incomplete. So a third and very long for the big blue at their own two yard line. Starts to drive with Keith behind him. 
and a whistle before the snap and a false start. So that brings Marmalade back five on the first and goal. So it makes it a little bit tougher, first and 15. It'll be a five yard penalty. Still first down. Gabe Tripp, 5'10", 145. So a huge difference there out wide, but Tripp was able to free it from the hands of Kamas. Second and goal from the 15. Wales takes a snap, gonna look to try to run, and Luke Sirianni is there along with number 55, Holden Riddell. The senior captain combines with Sirianni to make a big play. So now it's third and goal from the 19 yard line. Swamp says just gotta keep Marblehead right there. Only for two more plays. And then Swamp says finally back on offense. as this annual Thanksgiving game has happened. That is just impressive. 21 to 21, going into the final 12. Fingertips. He oh, had it. Man. He had it right there. But nonetheless, incomplete. Swamp Scott will have to refocus themselves and not think about that. What a beautiful ball from Spear. Just a little bit too far. Would have been a magnificent play, Dawson. That would have made the building, not the building. This would have, that would have made the <laughs> stands explode. Coach Bush went right up to Gabe Tripp on that after that play to calm him down. 
to reassure his junior wide receiver. Now here's Nad Werney running left, pounces his way to the outside and dives forward for a gain of five on the play. And it will be a third down and a big one. Swampscott just got a huge boost of momentum on the Domilowicz pick. Can they keep it going on the offensive side of the ball? They have to convert here. Spear now in the backfield with Nad Werney. Can they have the biggest conversion of the day? He takes the snap, he looks to throw left, throws left, will out of the reach of Liam Keeney and Swampscott will have to punt it away. Oh, never mind, they call the punter back. Looks like they're gonna go for it. No, I don't think they're, I think, I think they're gonna have Spear punted away instead of Field, who has struggled getting the ball away. Trying to win the field possession, field position game. Yeah, Spears gonna be back there to punt it away. High snap, he handles it and gets it away. That's a beautiful job. After the high snap, that's gonna. That could be a huge play in this game. That could have been blocked and taken in for a touchdown. Especially yes, it for has. someone that hasn't punted all year. That was his first punt of the season. Forty-three yard line for the Magicians. It's Gallup in there again. He's going to take it on the option play, take it himself, and Max Field is right there to rip him down to the ground after a gain of just one. Swampscott's defense looking for a big stop as they have a chance here today. Second down and nine. Gallup. Takes the snap, looks to throw right, throws to Keefe, who is hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. Joe Marino and Liam Keeney out there to stop him. The clock will continue to run. As they say, as momentum was stopped, still inbound. Third down and nine, another big play. Just as he thought he was just open enough to get the pass, he was met, he was met by two defensive men from Swampscott. One of the bigger plays of the game on third down and nine. Swamp Scott trying to hold and get the ball back for their offense. Let's go. Let's go. Gallup's gonna look to throw for it. Looking left, rolling left, looking for someone down the field, throws up a prayer, caught! That is caught by Ryan Kamas for a first down inside the big blue 35 to the 31 yard line. It was single coverage with Tripp and Kamas went and made a play on the underthrown ball. First and 10 at the big blue 32 yard line. We are under 10 minutes to go on the Turkey Day game between the two rival towns. Gallup's gonna hand it to Keith who runs right and picks up a few yards before being brought down. Siriati was there with the tackle. Clock continuing to run. Second and seven. Gain of three. Marblehead has been very good on third down all day, keeping their drives alive. They got a huge conversion there to Kamas. Now trying to take advantage, second and seven. He takes the snap and he's gonna hand it off to Keefe on the edge. Keefe has a running lane, but a nice tackle in the open field made just short of a first down. Bush was out there along with Jack Hazel. So a third down and short coming up. 
Swamp Scott just got to hold him there. Hopefully cause a turnover. Third and two at the 23 yard line of the Big Blue. Keith's gonna get the handoff. He's got a first down and more. He breaks loose and he's gonna be down first and goal at the five yard line for Marblehead. Again, another back breaking third down. Obala made the tackle to save the score, but Marblehead set up first and goal. Swamp Scott trying to hold its first and goal at the five. It's gonna be a design quarterback run right up the middle. Stop. And a hit stops him short. Gain of two, second and goal from the three coming up. That was a clean hit to stop him from going in the end zone. Second and goal from the three. Will they give it to Keefe who already has the two scores? Or will Gallup try to run it in himself? And do they dare try to throw the ball? Second and goal from the three. Gallup hands it to Keefe. He's got a running lane. What a play made by Brought Obama. out of bounds. What a play on the outside. He was Swamp Scott's only hope there. Magnificent. Third and goal coming up with 6.40 to go in the game. Third and goal from the three. Can Swamp Scott's defense hold? And as and as the band in fan section bring up the morale of the of the crowd. Third and three, the defense chants ringing out from the student section. It's Gallup on the quarterback keep. He's short. He is short of the line to gain at the one. It's going to be a fourth and goal coming up. Swamp Scott's defense clinging to their end zone. Under six minutes to play. And we're going to get a timeout Marblehead as they use their first of the second half. The biggest play of the season for the Big Blue coming up. Trying to break the streak. They have played a heck of a game so far. It hasn't been pretty per se, but they are hanging in with the favored magicians. It is fourth and goal from the one. scamper of the game. And the extra point is whistled dead as an offside on the big blue, which will bring it to the one yard line. Marblehead could go 
4-2 if they elect to do so. And we'll see what they decide to do as it's moved to the one yard line. They have to, oh, they kicked it over the shack. They have to bring a new ball out. Yeah, they did. They had to get a new ball because uh, McTorney kicked it all the way over the field house. That's a first. And as they line back up for the field goal. Referee trying to get them settled. 5.48 to go in the game. And the kick is good. So it makes the score 28 to 21 Marblehead with 5.48 to go in the game. Swamp Scott trailing by seven, looking to tie the game up on their next drive. No one Swamp Scott made might will. or break drive for the big blue offense. Matorti kicking against the wind. He has yet to get a touchback in this direction. Has two to the other side. We'll see if it affects him on this kick. And this one's a high, shorter kick. If it bounces out of bounds, it brings the ball to the 40, and it will. So the Big Blue will have good starting field position. That is something Swamp Scott definitely needs, especially with time running out. I don't know what the ruling is in high school, but I know the NFL brings it to the 40. We'll see what yard line it brings them to here. Student section chanting overrated to the kicker who recently committed to UNH, so congrats to him. Mm -hmm. I think that is why they are chanting overrated to him. Brings it to the 35 yard line for the big blue. Still solid field position. Nad Werney now lines up as a receiver as Will Bush gets the assignment in the backfield. Spears gonna look to throw. Whoa! Spear was sacked. I was too distracted. I was, I was distracted by the guy in the air. What he, happened? He was trying to block the pass and just went flying over an <laughs> offensive lineman. But nonetheless, it's a very long loss, so a less than ideal start to the drive, to say the least, for the Big Blue. So the Big Blue have a second down and long coming up. That'll bring up second and 17 for Swanstock at the 28 down line. That is Keeney in the backfield with Bush, and he is swallowed up. Haven't seen that look from the Big Blue, but it did not work. Third and 17 coming up. Spear now comes back into the game. As it has gotten very quiet at Bloxage Field is now a third and very long for the Big Blue. Trying to keep their hopes alive. Five minutes left, still plenty of time. It is Bush back in the backfield. Spears gonna look to throw, they need 17. Throws deep for Nadwerney and that pass is way too far. 
an incomplete. And the Big Blue are forced to punt it away again. So now the next defensive possession is make or break. Swamp Scout only has two timeouts to stop the clock, so they have to get a stop. That incompletion does stop the clock with 4.56 to go. Spear gets the kick away. And muffed and out of bounds is Cam Quigley. So Marblehead will be at the 45-ish yard line to start their drive, 47 officially. And the Big Blues defense in a make or break, trying to break this 12-year streak of Marblehead. Have to get a stop here. Gallup's gonna stay in at the quarterback position. The sophomore quarterbacks had a pretty nice day. Colt Wales, however, the other quarterback that they have been rotating in has two rushing touchdowns. It's Brooks Keefe on the first play of the drive and he swallowed up after a short game. Sirianni's had a big day on the inside, makes another tackle. And it's second down and eight. Big Blue's defense their pr the problem for the Big Blues defense has really been the third downs. It really has been. They've been very good on first and second down, but have not been able to get themselves off the field. He is one on the play. Gallup takes the snap and hands it to Keefe on the inside. Again, swallowed up by the Big Blue defense after a gain of one. So, another chance for the Big Blue defense to possibly get off the field depending on if they want to go for it or not. They're going to sub in Wales on the third down play. And they're going to take a timeout prior. Nope, it's an official timeout as we have an injured magician on the play. Starting center, Jake Scoblin, and he'll have to come out for a snap. And he runs out the field, good sight to see. But because of the official timeout, he has to come out for at least one snap. Could be significant. Marblehead having to bring in another center before the third and seven snap. takes the snap, fakes the handoff, the triple option to Palmer. He's got nothing on the edge, and stopped, and he ran out of bounds. That stops the clock. Marino held the edge beautifully for a loss, and it looks like the Big Blue will have another chance at it. What yes, a beautiful well done. job by a the Big Blue. Very beautiful job. Marblehead tried the triple option, and Palmer just had nowhere to go. They have, Swamp's got his two receivers back. They have Nadwerney and Hazel back. Matori is gonna kick it away. Punter, kicker. And he gets it away cleanly to the side of Hazel, who makes the catch and looks to return. Looking for room on the edge, reverses field, gets some space, makes Play another man hit, still a Jack Hazel. Magnificent run for Hazel. The Big Blue will have three minutes and nine seconds to try to tie this game up with the touchdown. Hazel's having a big day. Yes, he is. Has a kickoff return, a pick, and now a very nice return, setting the Big Blue up with decent field position at the 35. 
Hazel is very good with his footwork. Did not make one, but two players miss him. One falling to the ground. And bringing Swampscott to a first and 10 at the 36. Now the first snap of the drive goes to Nadworny. He's got a hole up the middle, stays on his feet, and he has a big blue first down. That is what we want to see, Dawson. From first down to first down, making their way down to Marblehead territory, hopefully into the end zone. Nadwerny's gonna get the handoff again, this time for a loss. That's great penetration there from number 65, Gunther Fehrenbach, who made the tackle for no gain as we are gonna possibly go under two minutes with this snap. Swamscott does not seem to be in too much of a hurry. Spears gonna throw quickly. Dangerous pass, almost intercepted. DeWitt was there, as well was Palmer. 2.06 to go in the game. Swamp Scott trailing by seven, third down and 10. Obvious four down territory, so they have two plays to get this to the Marblehead 42 yard line. Make or break time for the Big Blue offense. Spear takes the snap, looks to throw. Spear looking, pressure comes, and a big hit. He was down, but Jake Skoglin with the huge sack, and now the fourth down is almost insurmountable. They have to go for it, but it's gonna be a fourth down and a prayer. Swamp Scott's gonna have to burn one of their last two timeouts with 1.48 to go in the game. because they had to use the timeout. Now, this play is make or break. They will not be able to stop the clock enough times to keep Marblehead from ending this game. Fourth and 21 for the game. They have to get to the Marblehead 42 yard line. This is for the game. The crowd is getting riled up, Dawson. They shouldn't be, the offense is on the field. They need to be able to hear their quarterback. Spear fakes the handoff, throws down the middle, incomplete. No flag is down, and that is essentially gonna end the game. As, unless something crazy happens, it looks like Marblehead's gonna take home their 13th consecutive Thanksgiving matchup. Swampscott does have one timeout, so they can stop the clock once, but it is pretty much victory formation for the Magicians as people are starting to head for the exits. Wales gonna hand it off to Keith, just trying to keep the ball in his arms, timeout, Swamp's got their last of the game. And now Marblehead will be able 
to knee the game out. another play it's gonna be Wales running it up the middle he's got plenty of room and he slides down first down and that's gonna do it now they can comfortably just kneel the clock out say Josh it was a very valiant effort by the big blue it day. has been just the performance of them just with the with the punt with the kickoff return the pick they never did give up in this game they showed a lot of fight but in the end Marblehead the division three team will take down the Swamp Scott division six team for the 13th year in a row on Thanksgiving but the big blue really, really fought hard. As we get a final chant from the big blue fan section for our wonderful seniors, for captains Holden Riddell and Jack Hazel, defensive end Max Field, Wide receiver, running back, and cornerback, Sam Nadwerney. We congratulate them on a great football career. As that's going to do it, as the final score will be Marblehead 28 and Swampscott 21 as the final seconds tick off the clock. And that's going to do it from us at Bloxit Field. And for the final time at Blockstitch Field, I say thank you for watching. I'm Dawson DeBerry. I'm with Josh Harriman. And for us and everyone in the production crew, we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Go home. Thank go you enjoy watching. your turkey, your yams, anything you have on the table there waiting for you at home. Dawson, it has been a pleasure working for you as, pleasure, as it Josh. was your last year here announcing. It was. I will be back for winter sports, though. That will be, that's a good thing. I can't do this alone without you, man. <laughs> right. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good day.